Milarepa is the greatest yogi in the history of Tibetan Buddhism. He was born on 25th July in the year of 1040 in Gongtang, Tibet, close to border of Nepal. When he was seven years old, his father passed away, leaving Milarepa's uncle and aunt to look after his property. However, as uncle, aunt, and relatives were greedy and cruel, Milarepa, his mother, and sister had to serve them as slaves, and they were never given back their belongings. Desperate, Milarepa's mother sent him to study black magic in order to get revenge. Having learned quickly, he killed over thirty people and brought down a great hailstorm, ruining all crops of his enemies. Later. As a consequence, he felt a deep regret, which led him to practice dharma with intense diligence. At the age of 38, Milarepa met Marba, the translator. Marba was one of the greatest masters and translators of his age. Knowing that Milarepa was destined to be the principal holder and propagator of his lineage. Marpa put him through many years of severe hardships in order to purify all his negative deeds. Having become a proper vessel for the teachings, Great Marpa granted all the empowerments and secret instructions, leaving out nothing. Malaripa stayed with Marpa for more than six years and practiced diligently by clarifying all his doubts. Then he set out to meditate in mountain solitudes. Practicing intense ascetism for many years until he achieved ultimate enlightenment. Preferring the yogic lifestyle, Milarepa never established a monastery or community, but his fame spread all over Tibet, and followers gathered from near and far. His teachings. Were incredibly profound but simple to understand. From great scholars to illiterate villagers, people from all walks of life give rise to genuine realization based on his instructions. His collection of spontaneously sung songs carry the essence. Songs carry the essence of. Buddha's teachings and have become famous as one of the great religious works of all time. Though not considered as reincarnation of a past master, still his activity was unbelievably incredible. For he is the one who demonstrated that with unfailing diligence in one life and one body, perfect enlightenment can be attained by anyone. When he passed away in the year 1123 at the age of 84, many wondrous signs proclaiming his attainment of Buddhahood appeared, leaving no doubt as to his realization. He remains to this day the model for true Buddhist practitioner. Milarepa himself said, "Merely by hearing my name." One will not fall in lower realms for seven successive lifetimes, and will be able to recall seven lifetimes. Your.
and the area of Jiangarza in Gongtang, Mengyil, his paternal grandfather, Dorji Sangye, built a three-story house with four pillars and eight beams that was known as Four Pillars Eight Beams. After a son, Mila Tiparga, and a daughter, Beta Gunchil, were born, their father, Mila Hirvjansen, passed away. His maternal uncle and aunt stole all their possessions and wealth, leaving Milaripa, his mother and sister, to suffer for many years. These are the ruins of their house, which has been damaged by floods and is in danger of collapsing. This is the location and retreat cave where Mila Tiparga practiced after receiving instructions on sorcery from the Lama Yundan Jamsu at Anubkalung in Tsarong. Following the wishes of his mother, Nyansa Karjan, Milaripa went to Rizang and studied sorcery. He cast spell that caused his uncle Leongzhong Jansen's house to collapse, killing 35 people whom his mother hated. These are the ruins of the house. These are the ruins of Marba, the translator's father's house, where Marba was born and grew up. Realizing that Milaripa was coming, Marpa went to welcome him by plowing a field. When Milaripa drank all the beer and completed plowing the field, these become favorable circumstances for him to meet the Lama. Thus, this field is called the field of favorable circumstances. In order to purify Milaripa's misdeeds and obscurations, Marpa ordered him to build a tower. Milaripa carried all the stone and lumber himself and built this tower and courtyard. Marpa consecrated the tower and held his son, Dharmandordi's coming of age festival at the same time. The son lived here at this tower that is called the sun's nine-story tower, or in Tibetan, Sinkurgato.
when Milarepa offered his body, speech, and mind to Marba and said he would do whatever his lama said. Marba accepted him and gave him all the empowerments and instructions. This monastery was later built upon the ruins of the monastery where that happened. Thousand Dolong. Milarepa walled off the door of this cave and placed a lamp on his head. He then spent day and night meditating here without destruction and developed good experience and realization. The deaconess told him to request instructions on transferring consciousness at this place. The Lhobda Tigerfish Cliff or a Cave of the Tigerfish Prophecy While Milarepa was spending 11 months meditating without distraction at Phobter Tanyuta, or in English Phobter Tigerfish Cave, he placed this stone lamp on top of his head so that he would not move his body. Marpa and his wife came to this place and held a feast offering. Milarepa first made a seven branch offering and then described the certainty he had developed and how experiences and realization arose. Marpa and his wife were both delighted and each sang a song of praise. While staying in Narosampu cave, Milarepa had a dream about his house and his fields, his mother and his sister. When Milarepa first saw Marba's home, Dolong, he had a conversation with Marba's son, Dharmandorde. Later, when Milarepa returned to his homeland, the guru and his wife accomplished him as far as this place, the top of Dharma Pass, or Chulargan, where they held a feast offering at which Marba made prophecies of the future. This is the field Milarepa inherited from his father, called Triangular Grain Field. These are the ruins of the house of the teacher who taught Mila Tibarga to read. These are the ruins of the stupa where Milarepa and the son of the teacher who taught him to read place the remains of Milarepa's mother's bones, which they had made into small clay tatas.
Milarepa meditated for a long time in the cave on the mountain behind his own house, and established a firm foothold in meditation there, which is why this is called the firm foothold cave. Jitsun Milarepa spent many years at White Cave and Horse Tooth Middleway Fortress as an ascetic living off nettles. He accepted some food offered by his sister Beda and betrothed Zisi. He practiced the points on the scroll Marba had given him, which liberated his channels from the maras. This is White Cliff Horse Tooth Cave. Where he developed excellent qualities of experience and realization, and was even able to fly into the sky. <laughs> Milarepa flew from White Horse Tooth Cave to the shaded mountain in the front, where he meditated and developed incredible heat through his tumor practice. This is that place, Munchi Dima Fortress. <laughs> 